um, we're really excited to have Anna provide this demo. Um, she's been working closely with our network for the last two years in helping us connect to uh, the really wonderful resources that they published through the Marine Cadaster Project and um, has a wealth of expertise in uh, web and desktop GIS. And so we're really excited to have her um, sort of walk through some of her workflows and um, best practices for publishing from our server um, so that uh, we can share that expertise with the rest of the network, including all of you. So uh, with that, I'll pass the screen over to Anna and ask her to begin her demo. Thank you, Todd. And thank you all for joining us today. Can you hear me okay? I can. Perfect. If you were able to join us for the network meeting last November, some of the things I will be addressing today may sound familiar, but this demo will shed more light onto the actual publication of data through dynamic map services using Esri's ARC Server 10.3. I'm going to begin today's demo by showing you what you can do with how, by showing you what we do within marinecadastro.gov to prep the data for publishing. I will then move on to how we prepare the maps for publishing, continuing on to showing you how to publish the data through map services using two different methods. Finally, once we have these services published, I will mention a few steps you can take to test and maintain your services. The general theme and questions that you want to keep in mind while publishing services is how do you want your data to be seen by your users and what can you do to make your data more intuitive to use? So in preparing the data, there are a few things that you can take care of up front. You can see I'm within an SDE database here. This is where we store all our data for publishing. I'm going to right click and go into the properties of this data set and just highlight a couple items that we take care of when we develop our data. You can see that the name of the data set is pretty well spelled out and within the aliases we also add spaces so it's just easy to read. We also within the fields perform the same function of providing the alias all spelled out. If we do use abbreviations, we also spell this out within the aliases. One last thing we like to do with our data up front is project it into the web Mercator projection so that the service is not projecting it on the fly. So once you have all your data prepared and you're ready to add it to the map, you open ArcMap. Of course, I have a map already prepared for us today, um, but you'll add any layers that you want to the map. And then you'll want to follow some of these following steps as well. So I have the layers in here. As you can see, the layer order kind of follows that general points, lines, and polygons. We also think about the behavior between the layers, which layers are dropping on, drawing on top of other layers. We consider the shipping fair lanes, fairways, lanes, and zones layer to be a little more important than these other ones and a little more popular, so we actually have it draw on top of these layers below. And of course, any user can go in and turn layers on and off as they please. So within each of the individual layers, you'll also want to go within their layer properties dialog. So in here you can see that we have, again, the alias for the, the layer name spelled out. If you do not already have that done within your data sets, you can perform that here within the map. We also provide a description and give credit to any providers of the data. Another tab that you'll want to take a look at is the display tab. This is where you can set in your transparencies. But I also wanted to focus on this display expression um, field. So this actually allows when somebody identifies on a feature, the first thing that comes up in, in the dialog would be whatever you select here. I'm selecting aid name. 
Now, of course, all the other fields will come across for them to see, but this will be the main one highlighted. And then, of course, you want to set up the symbology however you would like. And you can also go into the Fields tab. And here, once again, if you do not already have this set up in your data in your feature class, you can set it up here as well. You can change the aliases. You can actually also turn on or off lay field, fields that you might not want your users to see. If you have any internal comments for features that are important for your organization but not or important for your users, you might want to turn those layers off, I mean fields off. Um, you want to be sure to leave the object ID and the shape field turned on in order for the layers to perform in the service. If those are turned off and a user were to try to add the data to ArcGIS.com, they would get an error that it's not supported. So be sure to keep those on. So once you feel good about the layer properties, and I'm just going to click through and show you that you know, that's not the only layer that we have this for. We actually have information selected and all those things that I just mentioned in all the layers of the map. And again, in the end, it just provides more useful information for your users. So once you have your layers all set, what you want to do is also go into the data frame properties. In here, you can provide more contextual information about the service. And I, I'm typing this in now, so once the service is published, you can see, um, see where that comes through. You can also provide more credit. And we go into the data frame and set the extent as well. Now this will tell the map service where to zoom in on the data. And as you can see, I'm already kind of zoomed in on the west coast here. So I'm going to say I want it to zoom into the current visible extent. You can also set that to a layer. You can also leave it at the extent of all your layers. We tend not to do that here because we have layers that cross the international date line and it will zoom into the, the middle of that data and that usually is actually in the origin of France. So we, we tend to like it to zoom into the CONUS, the lower 48, or some other area depending on what, what data we want to highlight in the service. So that's something that you might want to consider as well. So once you have your data frame properties set up, the next thing you'll look at is your map document properties. Within your map document properties, we like to fill out all this meta information to provide even more useful information about the service in general. So within the layers, we'll be talking about the layers, the data frame, you might want to mention something pertaining to all the layers together and how they should work in the map service as well that same general theme, and possibly if you have certain caveats or a disclaimer that you should be using when publishing your data, you can add that here as well. We like to include our name as the author, give marinecadastro.gov credits, and provide useful tags for people who are searching. We also put in our REST page hyperlink for the service. So. Okay, now you have your map ready to publish. 